Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video, we're going to be hitting on my version of the 10 best characters from the Wheel of Time. The story is chock full of amazing characters, Robert Jordan being one of the better authors out there for character development and detail in his world. He's the master of the unreliable narrator, and he uses this to great effect in his writing to give us very distinct and very interesting characters. Now normally this is where I'd throw up a spoiler warning, and I'm about to, but before I do, I wanted to point something out to those of you that are still reading the books and aren't quite finished. I have a couple playlists set up for those of you that don't want the ending spoiled, where you can watch all of my non-spoiler content without fear, and then later, when you have finished the series, you can come back and binge all the spoiler videos. Here's how you can access that. Go to my channels page and click on playlists. There are a number of playlists there, but the playlists that I want to call attention to are the major spoilers, minor spoilers, and non-spoilers playlists. You can watch any of these based on where you are in the series and just binge them all. Also, quick thank you to audible.com for sponsoring the channel. Make sure you go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nabless to get your free audiobook if you have not done so already. The link is in the description below. Now, let's go ahead with that spoiler warning. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, meaning it will have major spoilers all the way up through a memory of light. If you haven't read all of the books, you may want to stop now and come back and watch this video when you finish the book series. So this video is going to be a list of my 10 favorite characters from the series. These are my opinions, and one of the great things about Robert Jordan's writing is that we are all going to have different favorites and different characters that we connect with. I'm looking forward to hearing how your list is different than mine. But as with all of my top 10 lists, I use a ranking system to help organize my thoughts. For this particular list, I did quite a bit of preparation and research and put some time and thought into my choices. I wanted to get a good idea of what made characters in literature good characters and apply those ideas to this list. I decided on five factors that I would use to rate each of the characters within the series. I also made a rule that I would only factor in characters on this list that met one of two criteria. One, they had to have a minimum of five personal point of view chapters. There were a few characters that had slightly less than five point of view chapters, but also had a significant role in the story so I included them in my rankings as well. There were a total of 39 characters in the series that I ranked for this list, and in this video we'll be taking a look at my top 10. The five criteria I used were as follows. Number one, overall character arc, progression, and development. What I was looking for here is whether or not the character progressed over the course of the series. Did they grow in depth? Are they different at the end than they were at the beginning of the novels? Was their arc satisfying? Also, are they consistent as characters? Did their actions always seem to line up with their arc and who they are? or did their actions only seem to happen at times because the plot required it? The second criteria I used was uniqueness of the character. Is the character a one of a kind in literature? Are they a cliche? Do they have complexity and nuance? Is there a personality to the character that feels unique? My third criteria was their role in the story. Does the character play a major role within the story of the Wheel of Time? If they were removed, would it change the overall story much? How relevant are they to the other characters and events within the story? My fourth criteria was relationships. How are the relationships for the character within the story? Do they feel real and fully realized? Or do they feel forced and out of place and just there for plot convenience? Also, did their relationships drive their storyline and their character progression? And then lastly, are they entertaining as a character? Do I enjoy the times I'm reading them or do I just hope to get through their pages quickly? I have weighted each of the criteria slightly differently as I believe certain things are more important than others. So overall arc and progression are super important to me and so I rated that on a scale of 1 to 15. Uniqueness, relationships, and how entertaining they are all got scores out of 10. And then role in the story, while I believe it's important, gets the lowest weight is I don't just want to have characters high on the list because they're a main character. So that only gets a score out of 5. That gives us a total score out of 50 points. And one more thing before we get into the list. I am not factoring in whether I like the character in this list. There are going to be characters that I don't care for that make the list, but they're extremely well written. So without further ado, let's get into the list. Number 10, Grendel. Kicking off my list, we have Grendel. She was a character that we didn't see tons and tons of point of views from in the series, but when we did, I absolutely loved them. So let's break down her score. When it comes to her arc, she starts off mostly fully formed as a character, but we as the readers learn more and more about her and how nuanced she is throughout the novels. She is one of the more effective of the Forsaken with her plots and schemes, and she does the most damage to the forces of light with maybe a few other exceptions in the Forsaken. She also stays in character for much of the novels, 
She's extravagant and debaucherous, but she's also extremely dangerous. I just felt she was very well executed as a villain. She was easy to cheer for in a sense, but also easy to hate. And she represented evil, but in a devious way. For her arc, she gets a 13 out of 15. When it comes to uniqueness as a character, she's really quite unique as villains go. At first glance, she's just the epitome of everything sinful. She has sex slaves, she makes powerful people her pawns, she wears almost no clothing, but she's also very nuanced and very observant, and she has an intelligent air about her. She is dangerous, and she really isn't just a normal mustache twirling villain. She gets a 9 out of 10 for uniqueness. For her role in the story, she plays a fairly major role as the Forsaken Go, but not an integral part in the story. She gets a 3 out of 5 for role. As for her relationships, I love her interactions with the other Forsaken. When we get her point of view, her observations and the precautions she takes when dealing with them are interesting to me. You can see the history she has with them, but also the maneuvering that takes place with the forces of Shadow as they try to increase their own power. We don't see too many other relationships other than with her servants, so she only gets a 6 out of 10 for relationships. Lastly, as for being entertaining, to me, she's the most entertaining of the Forsaken. As I said, I love her intelligence and I love her scheming, despite just on the outside her looking like she just wants to have fun. I very much enjoyed her time in the books and even her fights in the last battle. She gets a 10 out of 10 for being entertaining. This gives Grendel a 41 out of 50 and she earns the number 10 spot on my list. Number 7, part 1, Avienda. Avienda takes the number 9 spot on my list although this is really a three-way tie with the next two people, so it's kind of number seven. For her overall arc and consistency as a character, Avienda is almost perfect to me. She starts off as a warrior who is running from her destiny as a wise one and from her feelings for Rand. She's conflicted with her honor and her emotions as we see a very real character growth from her over the novels. She eventually becomes a powerful character and a leader among the wise ones on the Aiel. I loved her arc and how she developed. She gets a 15 out of 15 for character development and arc. As for being a unique character, I really can't think of many characters like her. She's a very conflicted, but her voice stays very unique and distinct throughout the story as she struggles with facing the challenges that she can't fight with a spear. Her views on the world are very different from Rand, and that point of view gives another side to both of their characters. She's an adapter, she's intelligent, and very honorable, despite what she believes of herself. For being a very unique character, I'm giving her a 10 out of 10. As for her role in the story, she's one of Rand's girls, I guess? She becomes very influential as a wise one. She's a first sister to the Queen of Andor. She leads the channelers in defense of Rand during the last battle, and her children go on to become powerful channelers in their own rights. While she isn't one of the main characters, she is extremely important. She gets a 4 out of 5 for her role in the story. For her relationships, her dynamic with Rand is really fun for me to watch, as he really can't figure her out, and her conflict between her feelings and her honor are always very central in the relationship. I love that she isn't head over heels for him, and she forces him to submit to her will at times. She is an independent spirit, and I love their interactions. I'm not a big fan of her relationship with Elaine, as it feels somewhat forced to me and not very organic, and kind of sometimes boring. But nevertheless, she gets a good score for relationship. She gets an 8 out of 10 based on her relationship with Rand alone. Lastly, for entertainment, this is where she struggles for me a little bit. For much of the story, she's kind of boring to me. I'm not sure exactly why I feel like that, because I know she's executed so well, but she just doesn't have as many of the badass moments that Egwene and Nynaeve might have. She gets a 5 out of 10 for entertainment value from me. In total, Avienda gets a 42 out of 50 and earns a tie for the number 7 spot on my list. Number 7, Part 2, Patton Fane. Patton Fane doesn't get tons of screen time, but when he is on the page, it's perfect. So let's break down his scores. For his arc, I love watching him transition from being a hound for the Dark One to being a powerful nemesis to both the Dark One and the forces of the light. He's crazy, evil, and I love it all. The only downside to his character arc is its ending. To me, there's just too much of the Night King from the Game of Thrones here. Large build up to a very underwhelming ending. If he had a more satisfying ending, he'd get a perfect score here from me but since he doesn't, he gets a 12 out of 15 for Ark. As for uniqueness, he's an absolute one of a kind. He starts off the novels as almost a golem type character, but morphs into something completely different as the books progress. I love that Robert Jordan takes fantasy tropes or stereotypes and turns them around on their heads. Fane is so evil and absolutely crazy, it's impossible to mistake him for anyone else. For uniqueness, he gets a 10 out of 10. As for his role in the story, it starts off being a larger role, and it seems to diminish over time. He could have had a much larger role, and many of us expected that, 
but the abrupt ending in A Memory of Light is what limited his role. It's almost like Brandon Sanderson didn't know what to do with him. He gets a 3 out of 5 for a role. As for his relationships, he gets a high score here from me as his relationships are what drive him as a character. These aren't deep relationships, but they are central to his character. His need to find Rand, Matt, and Perrin is so strong, placed in him by the Dark One, that it becomes a part of who he is through his growing madness. As he becomes more and more possessed by Mordeth, the relationship that he has with himself changes as he essentially turns into a new person. He gets an 8 out of 10 for relationships for me. Lastly, for entertainment. He was sadistic evil, crazy, manipulative, and unstoppable at times. I loved him. What does that make me? He gets a 9 out of 10 for entertainment value. In total, Pat and Fane gets a 42 out of 50 and ties for the number 7 spot on my list. Number 7, Part 3. Tom Marilyn. Tom Marilyn, the beloved Gleeman from The Wheel of Time, one of the fan favorite characters for good reason. So let's see how his scores break down. For overall arc and consistency as a character, we see Tom go from being an exiled former court bard, making his living as a small-time gleeman traveling from small town to small town, to ending up helping and eventually guiding the most powerful man in the world. He goes through so much character development through the novels as he tries to run from responsibility, only to be roped back in by the Taviran boys over and over. The only knock on him really is that we don't see him a ton from a point of view standpoint. For his arc, he gets a 12 out of 15. For uniqueness, he's quite a unique character. He partially plays the part of the wise wizard trope, a role he shares with Moraine and Loyal at the beginning of the story. He's responsible for telling the main characters and by extension the reader about the world of the story. He is one of the sources of exposition in the novels through his stories and the wisdom from his many travels. He's extremely intelligent, skilled with espionage, and outstanding at the game of houses. He doesn't fit any standard trope and has a very distinct character voice. He gets a 9 out of 10 for uniqueness. As for his role in the story, despite his small role, he plays a very large role in the story over time as the person that is always there to help the Deviren boys and Elaine. He can't seem to escape responsibility and he always seems to be around to lend his wisdom, skill at politics, or, or even at times his skill with a knife. He gets a 4 out of 5 for role. His relationships are another very strong area. He has relationships with all of the Taviran boys, but especially Matt. He builds a bond with him and Rand as well as he helps Rand secure Tyr. His most impactful relationship though is with Moraine and it occurs as kind of a slow drip over time. The relationship starts in distrust, but moves to mutual respect and then eventually love. Watching this develop over time is really fun. Tom gets a 9 out of 10 for relationships. Lastly, for entertainment value, Tom is very entertaining to me. I enjoyed him as a character, I just wish we saw more of him. He gets an 8 out of 10. Totaled up, he gets a 42 out of 50 and earns the last number 7 spot on my list. Number 5, Part 1. Varen Mathwin. I freaking love Varen. She's another minor character like Tom that has a major impact on the story. I think she was so well written. So let's take a look at her scores. For her overall arc, she is so well executed. She is mostly fully formed as a character when we first meet her, but what we slowly learn about her and the big reveal of her being a mole in the Black Aja explains her mysterious behavior over time. The subtle hints dropped over the course of the story and the fact that her motivations and direction were a mystery to the reader for most of the story made her very compelling. She gets a 14 out of 15 for arc. For uniqueness, she's a one of a kind in execution in my opinion. She's a cross between a wise wizard slash exposition machine, but with a mysterious backstory, a big twist reveal, and a deceptive demeanor that constantly has people underestimating her. I think she's amazing. She gets a 10 out of 10 for uniqueness. As for her role in the story, despite not being on the page much, she has a large role. She helps recover the Horn of Valir, helps to free the two rivers with Perrin, helps rescue Rand, serves Rand in her own fashion, and then she makes her big reveal about the Black Aja. She has a major impact on the story. She gets a 4 out of 5 for impact. For her relationships, she's quite a loner. She really doesn't have any strong direct relationships that we see, but more acquaintances that we see interact with. Nothing is wrong with those, but her relationships don't really define her character in any meaningful way. She only gets a 5 out of 10 for relationships for me. Lastly, for entertainment value, I was glued to the page every time she was mentioned. As I said, I absolutely loved her. I found her way of speaking and her gentle way of guiding people, as well as her humility that made her different from the other Aes Sedai to be comforting, and she was an Aes Sedai that I'd want to spend time around. Yet she was also kind of dangerous in her own way. She gets a 10 out of 10 for entertainment value. In total, Varen gets a 43 out of 50 and ties for the number 5 spot on my list. Number 5, Part 2, Matram Cawthon. 
Breaking into my top five, we have the first of our main three characters, Matt Cawthon. I'm sure having him at this place on the list will cause a little controversy. Tell me why I'm wrong. Matt is interesting to me, and I honestly expected him to be higher on my list than he is uh, when I was first thinking through this but I think there are good reasons why he is where he is. He's obviously still one of my favorites, and I know for many fans he would be number one. So let's get into his scores so I can show you why he's here. For his character development, this is where I feel like he falls behind the other main characters. He doesn't seem to develop as much as everyone else. He's the product of his luck, and yes, his circumstances change. He gets wealthy, he leads an army, he marries the Empress of the Shan Chan. But through that, things seem to happen to him because of who he is, rather than him being forced into internal development and the change that Rand and Perrin were forced into in their arcs. He does learn to be more responsible, but he always kind of was in his own way. He's essentially the same character at the end, albeit with more power. Because his character arc isn't necessarily dynamic, he gets a 10 out of 15 for arc. For uniqueness, he is the jokester, prankster trope fully realized. He plays the rogue well, being witty, funny, and having a good heart despite being a rascal. He has a very distinct character voice that is very difficult to replicate. Brandon Sanderson actually struggled with writing Matt because it is so distinct. The only reason he doesn't have a perfect score here is that he's really just kind of a rogue trope. He gets a 9 out of 10 for uniqueness. For his role in the story, he is unquestionably vital as he's one of the main characters of the novels. He gets a 5 out of 5 for role. For relationships, Matt really shines here as he has genuine relationships with a number of characters. His relationships with the band, with Tom, with Perrin and Rand, with Tuon, they're all a part of who Matt is. And the reason that he ends up being responsible is usually prompted by one of those relationships. That's what drives his character arc. That's what drives him into situations that he doesn't want to be a part of. That and his luck. He gets a 9 out of 10 here. Lastly, for entertainment value, Matt is probably the most entertaining character in the story. He's funny. He's a badass. He's frustrating. He's unpredictable. He's a lot of fun to read. And he's one of the characters I'm most excited to see in the TV show adaptation. He gets a 10 out of 10 for entertainment. In total, Matt earns a 43 out of 50 and gets the number 5 spot on my list. Number 4, Perrin Abara. Perrin is the second of the Taviran boys on the list. Let's take a look at his scores. Perrin has a great deal of character development over his story arc. He is the most reluctant and the most conservative of the boys that leave Edmondsfield, and he's the one that desires to return the most. He is simple, but he develops into one of the best leaders in the book series. He's faced with choices at every step of his journey, and there is growth not only in his power, but in his belief in himself, his ability to lead, and his commitment to those that he feels responsible for. Perrin gets a 15 out of 15 for Ark. As for his uniqueness, Perrin is a very unique character. The idea of a wolf brother is very different from anything I've read, and combine that with Perrin's very distinct personal voice and approach to life, his simplicity as a character, he's really kind of unique. Perrin gets a 10 out of 10 for uniqueness. He gets a perfect 5 out of 5 for his role, because as like Matt, he's absolutely vital to the story as he's one of the main characters. For relationships, Perrin has a number of strong relationships within the novels. His relationship with Rand, for one. Perrin is one of the few people that will stand up to Rand because their friendship is so deep. Perrin's relationship with the people of the Two Rivers and those that follow him is also very consistent and fulfilling to me. I actually enjoy his relationship with Fael. I know a lot of you hate it. I think it feels very real to me at times. Obviously that plot line gets a little boring, but I do feel like it's a very real relationship that developed over time, and it drives Perrin's development as a character. Perrin gets an 8 out of 10. Lastly, for entertainment value, this is where Perrin struggles a bit for me. There were times in his plot lines that were extremely entertaining, like the battle for the two rivers, Dumai's Wells, the last battle, but there were also times that I just dreaded his chapters. For instance, the entire Fael being captured plotline. Yes, it was important to his development, but it was boring sometimes. And sometimes the wolf dream was tedious to me. Because of this, Perrin gets a 6 out of 10 for entertainment value. In total, Perrin gets a 44 out of 50 and earns the number 4 spot on my list. Number 3, Egwene Alvier. So Egwene is a great example of a character that I don't exactly like for parts of her story, but I think she's masterfully constructed and executed as a character. So let's take a look at her scores. For her arc, Egwene has one of the best arcs in the novels. She begins as the daughter of an innkeeper in a small rural village in the middle of nowhere and ends up as arguably the most powerful woman in the world before her death. What is also more interesting is that the trials she goes through with her time with the Shanchan, her time with the Aiel, her time learning to be the Amarlin, 
It molded her and changed her into the fully formed character that we get at the end of the novels. The literal only knock I have on her character is what I believe to be a small inconsistency in how she reacts to Rand saying that he's going to break the seals on the Dark One's prison. It's not that I don't see her being opposed to the idea, and in some senses she was correct not to do it in haste, but the way that she didn't have a direct conversation with him and ended up kind of seemingly opposed to him felt very out of character to me. Egwene is that person that always seems to want to go first, learn quickly, typically believes herself to be the smartest person in the room, and she often is. She has always been a foil to Rand in some sense, but it just felt very contrived and out of place having her try and gather armies to oppose or try and convince Rand rather than just sitting in a room and asking him why he felt the need to do that so they could work it out together. That was one of the few moments in the series I felt like the plot molded character development and not the other way around. Despite that, Egwene is a massive masterful character whether I like her or not, and she gets a 14 out of 15 for character arc and development. For her uniqueness, Egwene is a very unique character who is also very nuanced. She is very well formed and has a unique voice that is believable and relatable. I don't buy a lot of the argument that she's a Mary Sue character, but I can see the reasons why people think it. She doesn't have the plot excuse of being a Taviran like Rand, Matt, and Perrin do for their quick rises in power, but I do think her innate personality, combined with the trials that she went through, forced her to grow into a strong character. So I don't feel like much of it was Mary Sue writing. For instance, her time being a Damani greatly increased her channeling ability. Her time with the Aiel taught her leadership, honor, and critical thinking. She was also tutored in the ways of Aes Sedai politics by an experienced Amerlin in Swan. Combine those things with the fact that she was already extremely intelligent and very capable, and I think where she ends up makes sense. Egwene gets a 10 out of 10 for uniqueness. For her role in the story, she's one of the main characters and one of the most powerful people in the world. Easy five out of five here. As for her relationships, this is the only place I really feel like she struggles at all. I absolutely hated her relationship with Gawain. It never felt fleshed out and it always felt somewhat forced to me. Honestly, she didn't feel like the type that at that time in her life would have time for a love relationship. Uh, it just didn't seem in personality to me for her. Her relationship with Rand was inconsistent and it was rare that I ever felt like there was anything other than just constant bickering. There never felt like any real connection between the two of them. The only two relationships I liked of hers were Swan and Nynaeve. I loved her dynamic of displacing the people who formerly had power over her, as she proved herself more capable than them or a stronger person in her own right. For relationships, Egwene gets a 7 out of 10. Lastly, for entertainment, Egwene has some of the most badass moments in the novels attributed to her. She discovers traveling, she has some very deft political maneuvering, she defies Elida right to her face, something that no other person had done. She single-handedly leads the counterattack against the Shan Chan. She's an absolute badass in the last battle. She was always entertaining, even if you didn't like her at times. Because of this, she easily gets a 10 out of 10 in my book. In total, Egwene earns a 46 out of 50 and gets the number three spot on my list. Number two, Randall Thor. Rand is one of the best characters in fantasy literature, and he doesn't even take the top spot on my list. Can you tell I like the Wheel of Time? So let's take a look at Rand's scores. For character arc, Rand is essentially the shining example of how to develop a character. Not only does he go through a great jump in power over the course of the series, more importantly, his internal struggle and his struggle with accepting what and who he is, and ultimately the destiny associated with that, is what makes him a great character. His development is masterful. We see him first trying to stay alive as being a small fish in a big pond, but at the core of the story is really based around one simple question. How would you react if you were told that you, a farm boy from the middle of nowhere, would be not only responsible for saving the world, but that you were going to go mad, kill everyone you love, and then die in the process? What would that do to who you are? If you were given complete power, how would that affect who you are? Rand's character answers these questions in a very real and relatable way. Rand gets an easy 15 out of 15 for character development. For uniqueness, Rand is the embodiment of a fantasy trope that makes it hard to say he's incredibly unique as a character. He's the chosen one trope fully realized. But it's how this is done and how well it's executed that gives him such a high score here from me. He is so well executed and so unique in his character development and personality that he overcomes just being a trope. Rand gets a 9 out of 10 for uniqueness. As for his role in the story, well, 
He's essentially the most important character in the books, so he gets a 5 out of 5. Relationship-wise, Rand has so many notable relationships within the series. His relationships with Matt and Perrin and their friendship are apparent through the first five books, although it drifts a little as the series goes on. His relationships with Min, Elaine, and Avienda are strong, especially his time with Min and Avienda as we see them together more. It's his relationship with the world, though, that gives him a high score here for me. He is really set apart from everyone else and can't be a normal person once he becomes the Dragon Reborn. The burden of responsibility he feels is immense, and that's what drives much of the internal conflict he feels. It's his relationship with everyone that he's responsible for, which is really the world. Rand gets a 9 out of 10 for relationships. As for entertainment value, Rand was pretty much at the center of many of the most entertaining plots in the books. The parts of the story where he is absent to me are some of the most boring parts of the books, so simply put, I find Rand's time in the books incredibly entertaining. He gets a 10 out of 10 for me. In total, Rand gets a 48 out of 50 and the number two spot on my list. So who could possibly be a better character than Rand Althor in my eyes? This may be a shock to some because this particular character is not always the most likable, but to me, they are the most sincere, most real, and most relatable character in the book. Number one, Nynaeve Almira. Nynaeve is easily my favorite character, and while that will be controversial to many, I freaking love her. Let's take a look at why. Her arc is incredible. She starts as a village wisdom trying to protect the people from her village, and this never really stops. She never stops being that person. She just evolves in how she does it. Her character is full of hypocrisy, temper, and ego, and that's what makes her so real. She is so believable to me as her heart is always in the right place. And she wants for others what she isn't always willing to do for herself. She doesn't have the self-discipline sometimes to demand of herself what she demands of others. Nynaeve has a very believable love arc, and some of the most moving scenes in the entire books as she rallies the Borderlands to follow her husband Lan. I love that she also remains somewhat independent of the White Tower and never really turns into an Aes Sedai. She will help people. That's why I love her and I love that she managed to evolve as a character while remaining true to who she was at heart. She gets a 15 out of 15 for Ark. As for uniqueness, she's really a one of a kind. I'm not sure there's ever been a character exactly like her and her personality is so distinct as well. She will defend her friends, family, and people at any cost. She is brave, but she's also unsure of herself. She puts out a vibe of always being in control, of being confident, even though she doesn't always feel that way on the inside. She basically is always saying, do as I say, not as I do, to people, until she's called on it, and then she apologizes. It's that type of stuff that makes her real to me because this is how real people behave. She gets a 10 out of 10 for uniqueness. As for her importance in the story, she's one of the biggest characters in the story and gets a 5 out of 5 here. As for her relationships, this is another area where she shines to me. Her relationships are what drive her development as a character. They are why she does what she does. In trying to protect Rand, Matt, Perrin, and Egwene, she becomes an Aes Sedai. She stays focused on trying to help Rand even when it's clear that Rand is going crazy and he's kind of somewhat evil. Her relationship with Lan feels earned to me as well, as mutual respect is built and he sees her for what she is. She gets a 10 out of 10 for relationships. Entertainment-wise, Nynaeve has some badass moments, and her inner monologue is always entertaining and fun. The only reason she doesn't get a perfect score here from me is that she has some boring plot lines at times, but for the most part, she's incredibly entertaining. She gets a 9 out of 10 here. So in total, Nynaeve gets a 49 out of 50 and gets the the number one spot on my list of the 10 best characters from the Wheel of Time. Whew, that's a long video. I'm going to post the rest of the rankings on my Patreon so you can see the entire list from top to bottom rather than just the top 10. But what did you think of my list? What would your list look like? Please let me know in the comments below. Also, please like the video if you enjoyed this and make sure to subscribe to the channel to get notified when I release other content. Check out my Patreon if you want to see the full list. And while you're there, check out some of the other reward tiers for some special content. Thanks to everybody over there supporting me on Patreon. Hey guys, until next time, peace out. Think you're in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?